Hello and welcome to episode 111 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain. And we are here with the first of this week's three pro games. Today, as you can see from the header, is a Terran vs Zerg featuring first our purple Zerg, Roxkiss LZ. But more importantly, and yes, this is more importantly, this is the man I am featuring this week. This is our red Terran. This is TSL Pulp. So to fill you in on Pulp, previously on the Team Prime was PulpPrime.we, former GSL champion, won I believe the Super Tournament, which was a one-off return to the open season format for GSL. Really, really impressive Terran. Left Team Prime, recently joined Team TSL as we can see here from his tag. And really, I want to get a sense of how well he's playing. So these were the only replays I could find. It's um, three games against Roxkiss. Uh, Roxkiss LZ. Roxkiss being, I believe, the clan. Don't believe they're uh, an official sponsored team. As far as I'm aware, they are just a, uh, a loosely gathered clan of players. Uh, so this is just taken straight from Battle.net. We see Polk getting the one racks. One gas to begin with. This is episode 111, by the way, and I was very, very tempted to just grab a random Puma replay of uh, him versus any Protoss ever and just watch him 1 1 1 the crap out of them. I felt that would have been funny. But I did decide to play it a bit more serious because I really am interested to see how Polk's play has changed. Uh, to see how well he's doing right now. Uh, to get a feel as well for how well he's going to continue to do in the GSL. It'd be really nice to see him get back up to uh, the Co uh, Code S finals again at the very least. Or at least the semi-finals. So we have LZ here with his 14 hatch. Very, very standard for Zerg. Even on a two-player map like the GSL's dual site. Polt is going to come in here. He's going to see the one gas. He's going to see the spawning pool going up. He knows he's perfectly safe right now. There is no problems here whatsoever. Going for factory, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a reactor on this barracks uh, to switch with the factory. There we go. Uh, because if you are a South Korean Terran player and you're playing Zerg, you go reactor Hellion. That is, ex that is every South Korean Terran ever against Zerg right now. That is just the way everyone out there plays. It's a really, really good opening. It gives you map control. It forces the Zerg player to make spine crawlers. If he doesn't, you can run by, you can kill drones, you can scout as much as you like. It's just a brilliant opening. That and Reaper openings in TBT are my two favourite openings for Terran right now. As we see the factory switch onto the reactor, he has a command center going up. So again, that is exactly what you do. You expand behind reactor Hellions because you have that map control. Once the Hellions are out there, you know he can't attack you with Zerglings. You know he's not going to get any SCV kills. So that expansion is perfectly safe until Roaches come out. And by the time Roaches are out, you should have Marauders to kill them with. As you see, the tech lab finishes there. We'll be interested to see what upgrade he goes for first. Going for Marines right now because he does not have a great deal of gas just yet. We'll likely have a second barracks, uh, a second refinery very sh shortly. Going for Stimpak before Combat Shield. That normally means you want to be slightly aggressive, which is uh, very much in keeping with the Reactor Hellion opening. Combat Shield is something you get if you're going to turtle because you want your Marines to stay alive and defend. Stimpak is something you get if you feel like you're going to go attack because obviously it lets you kill stuff quicker. And then we have four Hellions versus one Queen, which is this Queen will die if it's not careful. Zerglings do defend. Ah, oh, that Queen is so close to dying. Nearly gets a good surround there with the Zerglings, but doesn't. Ends up lining them up and more and more going down. Holt right now with the advantage, taking that Queen down. We have a Roach Warren going up to defend. No spine crawler back at home for LZ yet. Which is very interesting. No spine crawler anywhere. Which is pretty much the standard reaction to react to Hellion at this point in time is to throw down two or three spine crawlers reactively. But he's got the Roach Warren, so we should be seeing we've seen two roaches in production, three now. 
We'll be seeing a ton of roaches popping out very, very shortly, which will shut this down. Because Hellions, uh, they just do not kill roaches. So what he's trying to do now, and oh, brilliant Hellion catch there. Taking out a lot of Zerglings, and he's going to run straight past this Queen. One roach only at the moment. Going to try and get some drone kills with these Hellions. Lining up wonderfully, but the Hellions are slowly going to die to the Queen and the Roaches as a second one and third part. These Roaches will now die. We will see in a minute just how many drone kills we got. The last one there right at the end. Killed nine workers. Nine workers. A lot of Zerglings killed. May forced LZ, in fact, to build a, uh, to build a roach run and build roaches. So I would say that was a very successful opening for the pulp. Now, as we can see, the factory will shift off of this reactor. Yep, going into heavy bio instead. Interesting, two reactor barracks, only one tech lab so far. Starport going down, that'll be for medevacs. So we're still not seeing heavy marauder. We're going to go marine versus roach. Building that bunker just to be safe so that he's not going to get uh, uh, busted by roaches or even uh, the chance that LZ goes into a bailing bus. Ton of upgrades on it. Oh, just uh, general stuff being built for pot. We have combat shield on the way. We have another refinery on the way. Interesting. Still only on two refineries. Now on going up to three. Has yet to add his fourth. Generally around the star point is when you take all of your gas. This starport is going to sit on the reactor and start pumping out medevacs almost immediately. He does have the gas for it. There we go, there's the double medevac. Uh, we should see a tech lab on this factory soon and we should start to see siege tanks on the way. LZ meanwhile is taking his third base, is upgrading to a lair and is getting plus one plus one for his zerglings. That is the melee attacks and the ground carapace. Meanwhile, Terran Infantry Weapons Level 1, that's the plus 1 attack, is coming out for Pulp. He has his Hellions manning this watchtower so we can see what's coming at him. This creep spread is not yet fantastic. It's going in the right direction, though. Of course, LZ was pushed back. Losing a Queen is really harsh. Being attacked by so many Hellions, even with a run-by. And now this is the timing for an attack. You push out with your first two medevacs. You have plenty of Marines. You've got a few Hellions still left. He did lose those Hellions earlier, but he pumped out four more before switching the factory with the barracks. So this is going to be a really nice timing to take down a third. And there is nothing here to defend. We have one Roach and a few Zerglings. The Marines will be able to kill that Roach, and the Hellions will roast the Zerglings. The Hellions are extremely being kept back, trying to catch any Zerglings out. And a nice sim there. Now the Hellions move in. Catching all of the Zerglings. Wonderful micro there by Pulp. But he is going to lose the Hellions. But they, did they do enough damage? Yes, they did. They certainly did. The Marines now running rampant over the Zergways. Going to kill so many drones. The hatchery goes down as well. So LZ now is in some trouble. We have Siege Tech on the way and Siege Tank making. It's going to help against any Banelings and also just help with the damage. We, uh, we have an infestation pit. But that could go down really quickly. That's what I'd be focusing on after killing this army if I was Pult. But it doesn't matter because LZ is GG'd and Pult is dominant. That was really nice to see from Pult. He hit everything perfectly. He hit his timings and he won the game. It's not unexpected that he won the game. Obviously, Roxkiss LZ is not quite at the level we expect from TSL Pult. But the thing to note is how well Pult is playing. He did not miss a trick there. Now, that is the end of episode 111. I will, of course, be back tomorrow with episode 112, which will be game two of Rocks Kiss LZ versus TSL Pole. Do not forget, you can join us on our forum when that gets properly kickstarted in a gear uh, very, very shortly. That's scforum.eu. Also, please, when you're playing StarCraft 2, join us in the chat channel. That is just scforum. Jump in there. I'm always in there every evening, or pretty much every evening. So say hi, have a laugh, uh, we play some games, we play peep mode, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we do have a mumble as well, so if you jump in the SC forum thing, uh, in the chat channel or on the forum, you can join us in the mumble where we laugh and uh, generally mock either Adzi or shout out, assuming uh, whichever one of those is there. Anyway, that is it for today, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all again tomorrow.